Okay, in this video we're going to look at um, projectiles that are not going from surface to surface, so they, they don't have a um, zero change in vertical position. All right, so they do have some vertical displacement and they also have some horizontal displacement. We'll work a, a problem in the book as an example, but some things we should remind ourselves of. Firstly, we know for all of our projectiles, for all projectiles, all projectiles, we know that the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. The acceleration in the y direction is going to be little g. This is true for all of them. And we treat the x and y stuff separately, so it's good for us to make a little chart for x and y components. And so we have ax, ay. Velocity in the x is constant because its acceleration is zero. We can have an initial velocity in the y and a final velocity in the y. We can have a displacement in the x or a horizontal range. We can have a displacement in the y. And we can also have our time. So here's just a reminder of our variables and how we can organize them, help keep them separate. And the only thing that is interchangeable is time. Otherwise, if we have an equation where you can only put our x things in there or we can only put our y things in there. <clears throat> now for what I'm calling non-STS, not surface-to-surface -surface launched projectiles, we have something for instance where there is a launch at an angle, call it theta, and then it travels in a parabolic trajectory and so its initial position is up here, you know maybe this is a you know 50 meter high cliff or something, something's launched with some velocity, maybe you know what the initial velocity is, maybe you don't, and then there's its initial position and here's its final position down there. Downrange, so it's traveled horizontally. It's traveled some horizontal distance or range delta x, but it is also has a um, vertical change in position right here. So this would be its delta y, and in red we have its delta x. <clears throat> we also still have, like we saw in the surface-to-surface -surface projectile video, there is a position that we call capital H max height, and that's still the vertex of the parabola that's produced, and it's at that point that we know something special that's very useful in solving the equation, or solving problems for projectiles, is that the velocity in the y direction at that max height h is going to be zero. So it's de losing vertical speed as it um, goes upwards, remember we have our components speed goes to zero at the maximum height vertically and then it starts increasing as it's speeding up and falls down. So the, all those in green are vertical velocities or Vy's and the whole time we have an x component, the x in red, that's going to be constant because we have zero acceleration in the x direction. <clears throat> so a similar type of picture to the surface-to-surface -surface launch, we're just missing part of that parabola. So all the equations are the same that are describing its trajectory or how its velocity in the y direction is changing with time. Everything vertical is still free fall stuff and everything horizontal is just constant speed, no acceleration stuff. So let's take a look at an example problem here. In a scene in an action movie, a stuntman jumps from the top of one building to the top of another building four meters away. After a running start, he leaps at a velocity of 5 meters per second at an angle of 15 degrees with respect to the flat roof. So that means 15 degrees above the horizontal or above the horizon. Will he make it to the other roof, which is 2.5 meters shorter than the building he jumps from? First things first, let's sketch a nice, as detailed as necessary, sketch of what we're looking at. So let's say that's going to be the height of one building. I'm going to draw the ground. And then we'll draw the other building, which is 2.5 meters shorter. So I'll make it a little shorter. Say it's like that. Okay, and we can put a top on the building because it is a building. All right, so this guy or stunt person is going to run this way, jump, 
and hopefully make it. All right, so our parabola is going to look something like starting position, ending position. All right, so it's not the same as a surface-to-surface -surface launch because there is a change in vertical position. Now, <clears throat> we want to list out our stuff um, that we know from the problem on our picture. That'll be helpful. So we know the building to the top of another building four meters away. Okay, so this distance here to here, which we could call delta x because it's horizontal distance between the buildings, and that is the horizontal displacement um, the stunt person is going to need to have to cover horizontally. After running start, he leaps, oh, it's he, he leaps at a velocity of 5 meters per second and an angle of 15 degrees with respect to the roof or the horizontal. I guess we have to assume in this one that the roof is flat. So I'll just draw a dotted line here to be like my x-axis and a vertical line to be the y-axis to help us uh, reference the angle. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and decide that up is the positive direction, down is the negative direction, left is negative, right is positive. Bigani Saljuni, if you're on campus, please come to the office. Your mom is here to pick you up. Bigani Saljuni, your mother is in the office to pick you up. Okay. I'll edit that out. Or maybe not. Okay, so here's uh, where's our launch angle. Let's make our total velocity in purple. So we're told five meters per second. That's the velocity, but we still need to recognize that it's going to have two components, a horizontal and vertical component. Where's 15 degrees? There it is. It's a pretty low angle, huh? All right, so I'm just drawing this vector arrow. Its length represents the magnitude, which is five. 0 0.0 meters per second are my units for that velocity and I have an angle which I'll draw in here that's my 15 degrees above the horizontal all right this is the horizontal the x-axis so that's 15 degrees above the roof above the horizontal all right anything else we know we know that will he make it to the other roof which is 2.5 meters shorter than the building he jumps from all right so we don't know the heights of each building, but we know that this right here is going to be a distance, just the distance there is going to be 2.5 meters. <clears throat> so I'll sketch in now our trajectory as best I can. So we don't know like if he's going to make this jump or not, right? So if he were to make it, we would have something like that perhaps, okay? So we need to know is he going to travel at least 4 meters to the right before falling 2.5 meters downward? And that's the question. For the sake of illustration, we're going to put in our x and y, or horizontal and vertical components of the velocity in purple. So here's the horizontal component that I can find with my cosine function. And here's my vertical component that I can find with the sine because it's the opposite side from the angle, and I have the hypotenuse. And I'm just going to write out what those things would be. This is, in purple, the initial velocity, vi. In green, I have viy. In red, I have vix, which stays the same the whole time, because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Let's go back to the smaller pen. viy is going to be 5 sine 15 degrees because sine is the opposite side related to the hypotenuse. And then I have Vix, which is going to be 5 cosine 15. Okay, so I have the values of those as well. All right, so how can we figure out if this person is going to make it across the roof? Well, we know we can list out our stuff in the form of our t-chart, which is really helpful. So uh, let's start with just our velocities. I know my velocity in the x direction. Oh, sorry, accelerations are the first things we should probably write because those are always the same. A, Y equals G, and I'm calling down negative, so it's the minus 10 meters per second squared. Velocity in the x direction is going to be a constant 5 cosine 15. degrees. Um, 
initial velocity in the y direction we know is 5 sine 15 degrees. V final in the y direction, which would be how fast vertically is the stunt person traveling, like at this point, that'd be V final y, and Vx would still be 5 cosine 15 right there. <clears throat> v final y we don't know. Um, delta y, so the delta y and the delta x we're working on uh, or working with are given in my picture here. The question is we don't know if he'll travel that horizontal distance or not. Um, we know for sure um, that he is going to have a vertical displacement of 2.5 meters. That's in the dark green there. And it's going to be positive or negative 2.5. Down's negative, right? So he's starting right here and ending up down here. So that's a vertical drop. There's the delta y, which will be a minus 2.5 meters. What other things can I note? Time. Delta x, <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to figure out. If his delta x is 4 or greater, he makes it. If it's less, then he doesn't make it. All right, so my blue trajectory there, that's my, you know, just a guess. Maybe he actually goes like that and impacts the wall of the building. That'd be awful. So we'll see if his delta x, if after dropping 2.5 meters, corresponds to uh, making it 4 meters horizontally or not. Um, T is my only other unknown that I can put in my T chart of X and Y stuff. So just looking at it right now, I say, okay, what, what things do I know? I need three things in order to solve for something else. So I've got little g, I've got initial velocity in the Y direction, it's positive, and I have delta Y, which is negative, which that's going to be how far he drops. So he drops, he could end up after 2.5 meters right here, in which case he would make it, or after dropping 2.5 meters he might be right here, in which case our delta x that we were solving for would only be, I don't know, 3.8 meters or something, and then that would tell us he wouldn't be making it. So let's use these equations, uh, or use an equation that has uh, these guys as well as, what, maybe time. Let's figure out what time is. So I have A, V initial, delta Y, and T. What equation can I use? Well, I know this one, V I Y, T minus 1 half G T squared. <clears throat> I'm solving for time. So, ooh, what's going to happen here? I'm going to need to rearrange a bit. And when I have, um, I'm going to have a coefficient here for V I Y. I'm going to have one half of little g right here, and so I'm going to have a quadratic function to solve. If I rearrange this just slightly so it looks a little more familiar, I would have minus one half g t squared plus v i y times t minus delta y. If I bring delta y to the other side. And there's your quadratic function, right? Zero equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So you could solve this quadratic function using the quadratic formula and get a value for the time. In fact, you'll get two values for time. Um, we'll come back to this because this was will arguably always take you a little longer to solve this way because you got to pull out your quadratic um, formula. But I'm just going to write out uh, write out the equation at least minus five t squared. We have plus um, five cosine, sorry, 5 sine 15 degrees is our initial vertical velocity times t, 5 sine 15 degrees t, and then minus, what is our delta y? Well, our delta y is minus 2.5, so this is going to become a plus 2.5. <clears throat> because I have a negative value for my delta y. So when I subtract it, I'm adding it to the other side. All right, so that would be the quadratic function you could solve. If we don't want to go the quadratic way, that's fine. Just go and solve for v final in the y direction. So if I want to find that first, I could use the equation. My only other option is the equation that has no time. So here's our other option. Let's just separate it with a line here is to go v final y squared equals v initial y squared.
squared minus, because down is negative and little g is going to be a minus value, minus 2g delta y. I'll isolate what I'm solving for, v final, in the y direction. So I have square root viy squared minus 2g delta y. I'll substitute now that it's isolated. Square root initial velocity in the y direction squared. Remember my initial velocity in the y direction is 5 sine 15. So this is going to be 5 sine 15, whatever that is, squared minus 2 times little g is 10. Delta y is minus 2.5 meters. I don't have my calculator out on the computer, but I do have it in my hand. So I'm going to do 5 sine 15. I make sure I'm in degree mode, and I get 1.294. And I'm going to square that and put that value in for 5 sine 15 squared. So that's 1.675. I'm going to have to round it. Uh, unless you wanted to keep it as an exact value, which you could do. Um, and then I've got plus because this is going to be minus a negative value. So 2 times 10 times 2.5 is 50. So my final velocity in the y direction should be square root 51.675. And I get 7.189. 7.189. And that should be in meters per second. And this is final velocity in the y direction. So after he has uh, fallen vertically 2.5 meters, that's going to be the vertical displacement from the uh, higher roof down to the lower roof. This is now going to be his velocity. And I'm not quite finished. What I need to say, because look, you're taking the square root here. So the square root of a value is positive or negative. So I have to supply the negative because down is the negative direction. And um, after he's been displaced, where is my picture? After he's been displaced 2.5 meters downwards, his velocity vector, his final velocity in the y direction is downwards, so that needs to be negative. All right, so we have a value for v final in the y direction now. It's minus 7.189 meters per second. <clears throat> I'll just round at the end. I'm having to round a little bit as I go. You make that, you make that, uh, Decision. Keep a few digits, and then at the end you can round your final value to fewer digits. Now we have v final in the y direction. We can solve time without doing the quadratic formula. So we just need, I mean, we can just use our first equation, I suppose. Let's put it right underneath. We had v final y equals v initial y minus gt. Good lord, what was that? Okay. So final, and um, what am I solving for? Time. So I have v final y minus v initial y. Always rearrange it. Um, divided by minus g equals t. My final velocity in the y direction was minus 7.189 meters per second. Minus my initial velocity in the y direction is 5 times the sine of 15 degrees. So let me do that again. 5 sine 15 is 1.294. Those are both in meters per second. And then my g, I get minus 10. So minus 7.189 minus 1.294 is minus 8.483 divided by a minus 10 should give me 0 0.8483. 0 0.8483. Is my time in seconds t? All right, 0 0.8483. 0 0.8483. Okay, so the person's run, running, they jump with mostly horizontal speed, so they don't have. It's not going to take very long for them to reach their maximum height and start to come down. So 
by comparison, if we were to drop something from rest, like if we said, um, if we did this guy, just to check our work real quick, to get a comparison, if we drop something from rest from 2.5 meters and let it fall, how long would that take? Well, if we're dropping it from rest, its initial velocity would be zero. And if we re rearrange this to get our time, square root twice the height over g is the time it takes to fall from rest. So let's say, let's see what happens when we put 2.5 meters in there for delta y. So that's square root um, 5 over 10 is 1 half. All right, so for square root 1 half as a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.707 seconds for something to fall 2.5 meters. So our time is a little bit longer than that, which makes sense physically because he's traveling upwards for a bit and then he's coming back down, so it takes a little bit longer for him to reach that vertical displacement of 2.5 meters. Okay, so our time seems, seems reasonable. I'm happy with it. Um, now that we have everything on the right side of my t-shirt, I have all of my stuff including time. There's only one other thing I could possibly solve for here now, and that's delta x. So let's see what delta x looks like. Let's see if it's greater than or equal to 4 meters. If it's less than, it's bad day for the stunt dude. All right, so delta x Get a slightly thicker ink. Delta x is initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half a x t squared. I'm always writing out the full equation, but I mean at this point you should really be aware that this is unnecessary to write the whole thing because a sub x is zero. So this whole term is zero, so you got nothing to put in there. Do not put little g in. If you're writing a bunch of x's, there's no reason for you to be putting little g anywhere in there. Um, if you're just talking about what's happening horizontally. So this is just velocity in the x direction time times time. Now we know our time. We know our velocity in the x direction is 5 cosine 15 degrees. Now we set that up here, uh, getting that from our um, decomposition or resolution of the purple vector into its horizontal and vertical part. So here's the horizontal part. And the time was uh, 0 0.8483. So 5 cosine 15 should be pretty close to 5 already. But then it's only 0.8 seconds. Let's draw it out and see how suspenseful it can be. So we get 4.8296-ish. That's 5 cosine 15. And we're doing times 0.8483. Is he going to make it? I don't know. Ooh. 4.097 meters. Because this is a velocity in meters per second, and this is time in seconds. So what did he have to get to? Four meters. All right, so he makes it by... Nine centimeters. Yeah, that's probably too close for comfort, man. Um, especially if you got other stuff going on besides, I mean, there's going to be some air resistance. What if it's a little windy? What if he doesn't perfectly leave right at the edge, you know, and he jumps a little bit before the edge? Yeah, 10 centimeters, not much, not much wiggle room there. So I wonder if they have consultants actually like do this math before a movie to make sure that'd be possibly an interesting job. If you mess up, that's probably really bad though. So anyway, all right, so here's an example problem. This number one is from the textbook. It's on, I mean, it's from the, not not the textbook you checked out at school, but the one I posted um, on Google Classroom, the Holt physics book. So I just went to the projectile section and picked one of these. All right, so, Often with these um, non-surface-to-surface, non-horizontally launched projectile questions, they're a little more complex because you have two different y positions to deal with, and um, you're also starting with a velocity vertically and horizontally at the same time. So you really got to draw the picture first, define your directions, draw the picture, um, 
find the components of the velocity vector, the vix and viy, and you got to think about what what you know and don't know, and you can use the nice chart setup to, um, to figure out other things that you can know that you can solve for in order to address the question and the problem. Like you really got to be able to pull from this this original question up here. You got to be able to pull from that. Oh, I need to know what delta x is, and if it's greater than or equal to 4, he makes it. If it's less, he doesn't. It's the same like with the the first Tony Stark problem. The tower is 1,300 meters tall, or the landing pad is that high. Does he make it or not? Well, you're solving for delta y. You're solving for that height, and then you compare it to the height given in the question. Is it greater than or equal to 1,300? So you got to make sure you understand your like the question first, and then you go down into it. All right? Here's, I'm going to do one other thing. So that, that's really all I have to say um, for a video on non-surface to surface launch. That's enough to get you going. Um, still doing the same stuff, free fall for Y or vertical stuff and just regular constant velocity motion for the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the horizontal stuff. But we can also, you can go straight to the quadratic equation. So now I'll do, now I'm going to solve this quadratic function. Um, you can also do it this way to get time. And there's a very interesting result here because negative, you'll get a negative value for time. So here's, uh, I'm going to draw this in a slightly different color so we can see it. Um, it's like orange maybe. So like he starts here and so say this is the actual parabola. He like barely makes it. So one of the solutions for our quadratic equation for time is going to be the time here where he has completed the 2.5 meter negative displacement because the 2.5 is in that quadratic function as a constant. So we're using that. But there's also going to be another point in time on the parabola where we would also have, have had a 2.5 meter negative displacement from a starting point and that'll be at this moment in time. So if this is time equals zero right here at the origin, then you're going to get some negative value for time here where it intercept, intercepts the parabola and you're going to get a positive value for time um, over here. All right. So considering other places on the parabola you could solve for, you could get two positive values of time, or you could get two negative values of time. For this one, we would want the positive value of time because that's after he's gone up and then displaced downward 2.5 meters from his starting point. All right, so if you want to keep watching and see the quadratic function um, solution, hopefully time, time better be the same value, otherwise I did something wrong. So what is our quadratic formula? I don't know. I think it starts with this, negative b plus or minus square root uh, b squared minus 4ac, is that it? Over 2a, right, because that should be, that should be g, yeah, so that's got to be right. So this is going to be equal to our t, our time, I'll we'll get two values. Okay, what is our b coefficient? Here's A, here's B, and here's C. So B is 5 sine 15, which I've forgotten what that is already. 5 sine 15, 1.294. <clears throat> so that's B. So I got negative 1.294 plus or minus square root B squared. Um, see, we did this in solving the actual kinematic equations already. 1.675. I swear I had it before. It was getting squared up there on the right. Minus 4. A is minus 5. Um, C is positive 2.5. Got to be real careful making sure this you got the right sign there in front of the last coefficient because um, this was originally delta y, which was y final minus y initial, which would have been 2.5 two, um, 2 minus z. Final was 2.5, initial is 0, but we're in the downward direction. Yeah, so delta y is negative, so I should have a plus on the other side. So I did that right. 2a is, um, a is negative 5, so twice negative 5 is minus 10. Okay. And then let's see what we get under our radical. I've got 1.675 minus 
4 times negative 5 times 2.5. So that should be fifty. Uh, yeah, 51.675. So that's what we had before in the other equation. So far so good. 51.675. And I need to root it. Add, subtract, and then divide by 10 to get that. Or I could divide by 10 now, I guess. Let's see. Uh, square root of my answer is 7.1885. 7 point, or if you just have a quadratic function solver on your calculator, like you can just use that as long as you know what you're doing. That's why do I that is the square root. So square root 51.675 is 7.1885. <clears throat> so now we'll take it to plus I have minus 1.294 plus 7.1885 is uh 5.8945 then divided by minus 10 is I get the value for t equals minus, here's a negative value for time, um, 0 0.589, say 5, we'll round it to seconds. And if I go negative, what do I get for t? I get minus 1.294 minus 7.1885 divided by minus 10. And I get a positive value because I have minus 8.48 divided by minus 10. So I get a positive value for time. That's 0 0.8483 seconds. All right, so this would have been uh, before he jumped. And this is after he jumped. And there's what we got. It's the same, right? The same amount of time. Thank goodness. OK, so I did it right. There's another way to check. So you can go straight through to the quadratic part or just go find v final in the y direction and then use um, another equation like we did, did over here on the right to get time. <clears throat> okay, so that's pretty much it. In case anybody's still hanging around, let's graph it. Um, so I'm done. I'm just going to graph this thing and see what that parabola looks like. It'll only be for uh, vertical position as a function of time, so it's not the actual trajectory of the of the person. So we can say, how can we write this? I want to do it like this. It would be minus 5t squared for half g um, plus viy t and then my initial position I could call negative 2.5. My final position, or I have to say positive 2.5. Yeah, so let's see if we plot that, what that looks like equals minus 5t squared plus um, that was our vi sine so it was 5 sine 15 was 1.294 that's I think I need to use x and what's our last one plus 2.5 And then we can just zoom in on this guy. <clears throat> Whoa. All right, so we have time, peak height vertically. Um, there's starting position. So we're saying 2.5. So this is my vertical position on the y-axis. So 2.5 meters above um, the 
the second building, the roof he's jumping to. So he jumps, reaches a maximum height at 0.129 seconds, a maximum height of 2.5 uh, meters, and then starts coming down. And this, so this y-axis is just showing vertical position. The x-axis is just time. There's no horizontal distance here. And boom, there we go, right? After he's come down 2.5 meters, 0.848 Seconds have passed. I don't even remember what my answer was. 0.848 seconds. Yep. 0.8483. All right. So Desmos is rounding it. So there's the way you can see your parabola. And then where your negative time is right over here. So like he was never physically at this position, but had he been, if he had continued the trajectory backwards in time, I guess he'd be like down inside the left building somehow, but it would be at minus 0.589 seconds if the conditions of the projectile were still true. All right, so that's all we have for this one. <clears throat> we will see a number of these next week. Um, there's one in the guided notes you should try to solve. That's a non-surface to surface projectile problem. Um, and that's it. Make sure you solve the other ones, horizontal and the surface-to-surface-to-launch -to -surface -to problems before we come back and do our horizontally-launched projectile lab on Monday. That's all. See you.